from the Opopco Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching the Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. Time for our 5 and 5 segment. We've got five topics, about a minute each for five minutes. Barry, let's get right to it. We've got some NBA questions as the playoffs get ready to start. First of all, biggest cause for concern for the Thunder in the first round is? Well, I mean, I think it's uh, James Harden going off because we know James is capable. In three games against the Thunder, he, uh, he had one monster game, 46 points. That's the game Houston won with a late rally. Uh, James, of course, will be playing uh, all out anyway, but he's also going to be playing for a cause to show the Thunder what, they, uh, what they're missing out on. Uh, I don't think the Thunder can lose this series, uh, but James Harden can certainly make it interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, the Thunder's going to win this series, but I think as much as anything, the Thunder can't get caught up in the Rockets' style of play. They just want to get up and down the floor, shoot a bunch, uh, you know, score a bunch. The Thunder obviously loves to score too, but I think they're more defensive minded, but they sometimes get sucked into those track meet games a little bit and can find themselves in trouble. I don't think they're going to lose a bunch of games in this series, but if they get sucked into those track meets too often, they could find themselves in a longer series than they want. No need to let this series linger. They need to finish it up in four or five games. Don't get sucked up by the track meet. All right, true, false, Barry. Thunder sweeps their first round series. I'm going to say false. I think James will have a, a big game in, down in Houston, and uh, Rockets probably get one down in Houston. I don't, think, uh, uh, I don't think the Rockets can win multiple games. Thunder might sweep it. I was very unimpressed with Houston Wednesday night in L.A. I thought this team uh, is not a 45-win team. I don't know what's going on with the Rockets, but they're certainly capable of a breakout game. I think they get one from Oklahoma City. Yeah, I'm going to go false on this one as well. I think a sweep is possible, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I, I, I think, yeah, James Harden, the track meet style of play, I think those things are probably going to mean at least one win for the, for the Rockets. I've got the Thunder in five, so I say false to the sweep. But it's definitely, you know, if the Thunder pounds them at home in those first two games, you could maybe see the Rockets laying down go, going home to Houston. I think those first two games could really be telling whether this is a sweep series or not. All right, Barry, let's get off the hardwood and onto the gridiron. The Cowboys are having their spring game on Saturday. Who's the Cowboy with the most to gain? Well, I think it's Wes Lunt. I mean, this is a guy I think is headed for a red shirt status if he doesn't beat out uh, Clint Shelf. And, you know, I, I assume Wes Lunt would like to play. I think uh, with a great showing, he can give Oklahoma State coaches a pause to, to consider redshirting him, a pause to consider giving the job to Clint Shelf. I think it's quite possible Wes Lunt could still be the quarterback in 2013, but he needs to play well on Saturday. I think Clint Shelf's got a lot to gain on Saturday and how he performs. You know, we heard last year when he was started out the season as the third team quarterback that he just didn't practice well. He looked a lot better in games than he did in practices. And when you've got a new offensive coordinator and Mike Yursich who's helping to make this decision of who's going to be the starting quarterback, I think it'd be good if he went into a game-like scenario and played really well. Apparently, Wes Lunt practices a lot better. So I think uh, Clint Schultz got a lot to, to gain in this, in this spring finale, as they're calling it at OSU. But I think it could definitely help his chances to be the starter come fall. Our fun question of the week, Barry, put yourself in Marcus Smart's Nikes. Would you have made the same decision as he did? Well, the answer is no. The answer is clearly no. Not that I think Marcus Smart made the wrong decision, but I would not have made that decision. You're, talk, you're watching a guy that actually turned pro at the age of 18. I quit college uh, the summer after my uh, high school graduation, went to work full-time at the Norman Transcript, and uh, just uh, went about my business. So uh, I did what all these other guys are doing, uh, headed for the NBA. And I just I wasn't that crazy about college. I eventually went back and got my degree, but uh, you know, running around a college campus didn't do much for me when I was 18. It apparently does much for Marcus Smart. Talked about how much he loves being at OSU, likes the life, is ready to delay the NBA. So I'm not saying Marcus made the wrong decision. I'm just saying it's not the decision I would have made. Yeah, I, I would have been hard pressed to make the same decision. And, and bully for Marcus Smart for making this decision because it does run in the face of what everybody else does. I mean, we rarely see the Andrew Lux or the Marcus Smarts of the world. Usually it's guys going the other way. So I think it's great that he made this decision, but when you look at the chance that he had to, you know, be a top five pick, uh, the, the contract and the certainty that comes with that, you know, the chance to really set yourself up and have uh, finances for the rest of your life if you play your cards right, I'd have been hard pressed to say no to that. I mean, that's just, there's some certainty there that 
would be hard to say no to, but Marcus Smart, we're glad to have you back. College basketball in the state looks a whole lot better with you than without you. All right, lastly, Barry, after you've seen the OU spring game, are you more or less certain that Blake Bell will be the Sooner starter? I'm more certain. I'm virtually certain he will start the season. I assume he'll keep the job. I can't, I can't speak about later in the year, but uh, Louisiana Monroe on August 31st, I'm more certain that Blake Bell will be the starter. Bob Stoops, as you have written, Bob Stoops uh, prefers the veterans. Uh, Blake has uh, shown that he's got a uh, certain skill set that they like. He can throw, he can move, uh, and he played well Saturday. He showed that he can, he can get the job done uh, from, from what we could see. So uh, I, think, uh, I think the job is Blake Bell's. I think it is too. And, you know, I thought if he went into that scrimmage and played and looked like the starter, he would, you know, create more of that certainty in the coach's mind. And I thought he looked like the starter, Barry. You, you alluded to that in your yeah. column after the spring game. And I just think all, all of it looks like a starting quarterback. The decision-making, um, you know, the plays that he's able to make, uh, the way he carries himself. Although I was impressed with all three of the quarterbacks in, in the post-game interview. I really thought all of them had command of, uh, of being able to talk to us as the media, which makes you think that they're probably good with their teammates and in the locker room. So that's all good. But Blake Bell just sort of – it felt like he – was the starter. In his mind, he had taken that role and, and carried it off on Saturday. I think that's what's going to happen come the starter for the Sooners. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.